Morning, Mountjoy Prison. All right, hold the line there now. Follow me now, please. Dublin's Mountjoy Prison is one of Ireland's largest prison facilities. Right, they do every year. Operating 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. With over 750 inmates and over 700 staff, it's a city within a city where drugs are the common currency. And the threat of violence is a fact of life. A community hidden from the public gaze where hardship, humour, heartbreak and humanity live side by side. Within these walls, the pressure cooker environment of prison life can lead to dangerous scenarios where violent attacks are carried out against staff and amongst prisoners. Yeah, I know you'll box the head off me. We're sure gonna have fun trying anyway. This is the joy. Welcome. I know, I'm too nice, huh? But I'm always like that. It's morning unlock. And Officer Sheridan on the A2 landing is getting things moving. Did you give me an Easter egg, Paddy, you know? Did you? Drop it up to me later, yeah? In an environment where prison officers are outnumbered by prisoners, social skills are often their best line of defence. Hello, lads, you in? Let's go. Come on, Jesse, no smoking on the landing. No smoking on the veranda. Jesse, you in? Yeah, I'm in. Come on, Jesse, let's go. No smoking on the veranda. It's a close knit little community that we have here. Sometimes they'd have good days, sometimes they'd have bad days. They all get me Christmas cards every year, and all those oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Valentine's cards, and all they get me. Blow me to bits. If a prisoner comes up to me and tends to start screaming and shouting at me, what happens is he has 42 other boys on the land and watching him. But if he backs down, that impacts on him. Jeez, your man, he bottled it. Likewise, they're also looking at me. Because if I tend to back down, I'm going to say, well, Cheryl's a pushover. Mr. Sheridan's a pushover. Jerry, are you ready? Let's go. Come on. The threat of violence is a part of life and the joy. When a violent incident occurs, staff can activate an alarm system to call for help. This is known as a break glass. A fight ensued up on A3 and staff went to assist. One man's removed down to the reception to cool down and one's back in the cell. Men fight, women fight, people fight when they're cooped up in a small area. The tension will be a bit high for, for a while, not long now, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, but prisoners will go about their business, they'll talk it out. Um, eventually, more hopefully, we'll shake hands and we'll all be friends again by the end of the day. It goes with the territory, there is a lot of violence. When it comes to using of blades, uh, that's when it gets very messy. Come on, yeah. boys, want to get the land yeah. 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 We've seen some horrific attacks on fellas. We've seen one guy who ended up with almost 100 stitches in his face. And more often than not, in a situation like that, the guy who has been attacked will not press charges against the person who did it. Probably won't even tell you who did it. Although more often than not, we can look at the cameras and we can see who did it. But uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of blade attacks over the years. And um, there's, th there's no winners, really, you know? Formerly known as St. Patrick's Institution, Mountjoy West is a facility on the campus that houses protection prisoners on its D-wing. These are prisoners who have been separated from the prison population for safety and security reasons. You make the best friends in prison. It's always good to have a good friend with you because you don't know who you're going to be fighting in prison. You don't know who's going to try to attack you. At least if you have a good mate or two with you, you know you feel safe. Because it's not a nice place to be on your own prison. Paul Cummins is a prisoner on the D1 landing of Mount Joy West. He is currently serving four years for robbery. <laughs> hard work, hard work. You should fit. Wait, more the politics of all everyone talking about you. I mean, that's prison, Coronation Street. <laughs> I'm gonna fall again. <laughs> oh, boy, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Paul has a long history of causing trouble in prison, but he's trying to turn himself around in the hope of getting a transfer to the training unit, a semi-open facility on the Mountjoy campus. Well, I always knew right from wrong. I just chose the wrong route because I didn't really care. I mean, I didn't think I would care about anything or anyone because all my family was dead and everyone was just gone. When I was out seven or eight, I see my ma pulling a needle into my dad's arm. And I goes, ma, what's that for? And uh, why are you doing that for? And she turned around and goes, oh, it's all right, the doctor tells us to, to make us better. And me being a kid, I would have believed it. But as I grew up, it made me I find it hard to trust people. So the way the governor's telling me he's going to give me the training, and I still don't believe it until I say it. So he reminds me every day, don't worry, I'm a man of my word, I'll give it to you. So I'm, I'm, I'm going on that hope. Because I'm sick of jail. I'm sick of it, it's just not in me anymore to do it. I hate it. Holy ground now we get around and she has me on the straight and arrow. You know what I mean? So fourth person have a lot. She doesn't take drugs herself. You know what I mean? So I'm changing my whole myself. <laughs> I ain't leave a hole. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I wanna marry her. Oh well. Are you ready to take her three back from the visits? Okay. Due to the massive amounts of drugs on D-Wing, all prisoners on this division must now see visitors through a glass screen. Visits are one of the main routes for drug smuggling into the prison. You said it to me before, but this time if you're serious and you stay off the drugs now, we'll get you into the uh, addiction unit, okay? With news of the screens just reaching prisoners, okay? D-Wing staff are now expecting some sort of reaction. Unfortunately, we've been having an awful lot of drugs stuff in the past year. And I think it's just management basically taking action against it. And it's a sound move, but it won't be happily greeted by the prisoners. But sure, that's jail. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, they haven't put the whole place on screen because it's good. It's going to be harder. I'm oh, not going to do that. I'm brand new, you know what I mean? I've only seen months there. What do you think, though? You're going down D1 on a canoe, you will. <laughs> Back in the main prison, a surprise search of B-Wing is about to take place. This morning we're carrying out a general search. We're looking for specific items. Mainly two snooker balls which were uh, taken out of the rec hall yesterday evening. They would be a very nice weapon in a sock. Could do major damage to someone's face or head. Oh, we found a table ball. Oh, we found them. That's, That's for you. <laughs> The search has been fruitful and has uncovered some contraband. We got a, a bit of hooch, which would be uh, jail alcohol, homemade stuff, homebrew. Got a bit of that. We recovered one of the snooker balls as well. There's still one missing. Screen visits have recently been put back in place for all the wing prisoners in Mount Joy West. Right. Governor Kavanagh is preparing himself for the inevitable backlash from the inmates. Ah. Sisters coming up now, Friday, any chance of we'll be able to get a box? No. no, not for the moment, no, because I put the screens back up in the visits, as you're aware, okay? I'm not going to grant any open visits for the moment, okay? okay unfortunately, I, 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 I can't, okay? Because it's the amount of drugs that have been here, okay? I'm still getting requests and the most heartfelt requests to let people have open visits. They can really try and pull on your heartstrings, you know. 
the governor, bear, bear my kids, yeah? There's so, 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 so stand there for a second before you yeah. get, get excited, right? The amount of people here who aren't involved in drugs, no interest in drugs, and their families been people being put all the pressure on the outside yeah, to bring yeah, drugs into people. Right it's horrendous. I had one or two yesterday who were quite annoyed, to say the least, quite upset. One of them threatened to do a few things to me, but then come back and wanted to apologise. People who are willing to be urine tested, OK? Yeah. I, I would look at giving them a more enhanced type visit, OK? Particularly yeah. with their families. All right, so at the moment I have to deny your request, OK? Oh, shit. You know, the supply, I believe, is, is starting to run out under the division, so all it needs is to get one person in on an open visit, and that person will be put under so much pressure to bring stuff in. So I, it would be unfair at this point in time to give him an open visit until, until he can settle down. This is brown bread, but fuck it. Any bread will do. Sometimes you can get it straight away and sometimes you can't. The whole land of that night does be stinking with toast. There's loads of people do it, like. <laughs> I don't know, man. Sorry. Oh, man. That's lovely. That's right. In a few days' time, prisoner Paul Cummins will find out if he's been accepted for transfer to the training unit. So far, he's feeling good about his chances. There was a preview meeting last week. Governors, chiefs, ACOs, drug councils, they just talk about where you're at. My name got brought up. It was just all positive talk about me, whereas usually it's just all negative talk about me. It's Paul Cummins doing this, Paul Cummins abused this, so I was like, Paul Cummins was fine with this fella, Paul Cummins smashed up this. But now it's all positive talk. Paul Cummins is doing great. He's walking away, he's paying the whole jail. He's a completely changed man. He's an inspiration to other prisoners. If I can get where I'm at now, there's hope for everyone. Give me more! Yep! Yeah. I'm going to train you in two months. The governor said, he said, definitely, he said, I'm a man of my word. He says, just don't mess up on him. Give me your chance, you're gone. So, I thought this would never, I thought I'd never get a chance like this. I just got to show Keep the head down, you get the chances. Prison's just, it's no point in coming in here and being the fucking class clown for all your mates, for them to laugh at you, getting took out and run them up. The training unit is a semi open facility on the Mountjoy campus. Prisoners here have greater freedom and can receive temporary release for training programs and college courses. It's designed to reintegrate prisoners into society before they are released. You going down? There's a more relaxed atmosphere here, with virtually no incidents of violence. Go down, lads. No. Stand back, two. And where even prison staff wear civilian clothing. 21 years in the job, Officer Moran has been working in the training unit for the last three. <laughs> this is the doctor's dog, uh, which has been uh, minded here for a couple of weeks while she's on holidays. It scares me every time I open the door because I keep forgetting to stare. <laughs> we usually get to kind of star pupils uh, most of the time, and the odd fella is uh, given a kind of a, a chance by a governor, acts out on a hunch maybe that, given a different environment, uh, this young lad might uh, behave a bit better, you know, if he's around different type of people. You have to be engaging and cooperating. A place like this allows a fella to kind of maybe show the real him, the guy who never got a chance to develop because of where he lived, what his circumstances were, and, you know, maybe maybe it's a place where he can develop here, you know, in, in, the, in the kind of calm, calm environment, you know? Uh, where are you going? Officer Moran is probably best known amongst training unit inmates as the manager of the training unit football club. Come on, Liam, come on, make sure. Well done, Daryl. Keep it in. Keep it in, Daryl. Great effort, Daryl. What we're training for at the moment, uh, there's a tournament between ourselves and St. Pat's and uh, Bohemians and Sandy Hill Valley Moon. Well done, Connor. Oh, 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 oh. Connor! Connor! I'm not trying to say that uh, prisoners are great people. 
But if you look into their backgrounds, their parents have been in prison, their grandparents are in prison, and prison is a very normal progression in life for them. What we do here is we just try and divert them into another groove, which may lead them on to a better place. Connor, Connor. Get some water down there. No, it's not pointless. It's not, it's not pointless. It's not pointless. It's not pointless. Football is probably the best thing in here. Mr. Morney's sand as well, so he lets us have a bit of crack. Oh, for ten minutes I was Mr. Morney. Ten fucking minutes. Are you back on? There's another. There's three towards. Three towards. He would have. He would have played a lot of sports when he was younger. And then I would have just started getting him at the wrong crowd around thirteen or fourteen, and just moved away from that side of football and stuff. Connor is serving a five-year sentence for robbery. He's just under a year left in prison. Addiction and imprisonment have been constants in Connor's life since an early age. No, no, that, that, that is not true. You turned me away before. Back the truck. Prison is a part of life for me. I done the first sentence when I was 17. I got 12 months for section two assault and handling stolen goods. It was just me being me at the time, just trying to be jacked at that, one of the lads, you know. I feel I've matured anyway, that I'm ready to go out and do stuff for myself, not for other people, you know, and support myself and do the right things by myself and my family. It's not just all about me. My ex-partner, she's with someone now and he provides for my son. Something that I haven't been able to do, which kills me inside, really. They don't tell you what to do here, it's more of you make your own time, you do what you want to do, but they do observe. You might think they're not observing you, but they do. If you don't do nothing, they will pull you up on it. I'm happy with the progress I've made so far, but then again, it could, it could all just crumble if I do something stupid. Prisoners have to remain drug-free if they want to keep their place in the training unit and are subject to random urine tests. If they fail, they are shipped straight back to wherever they came from. We're going up to do the order. This is, uh, this is, this, is that the going from uh, Trinidad? Yeah, from yeah. Trinidad. How are you doing, James? Having only moved to the training yeah. unit a few weeks ago, prisoner James McCardle has been sent back to Mount Joy after breaking the unit's rules. So I'm trying to back into the population and down courses. And they say you're under the influence yesterday, that's why you're back. It's suspicion and because I couldn't get it over. Right. That's why. So you were saying you weren't under the influence, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. You're not fighting anybody else, you know? No, no, no. Okay, we'll get you moved upstairs then, shortly. Okay? Yes, no problem, yeah. Okay, James, no cheers. Can we get you on in here? I just proved the point as well. He was coming in with a ready-made story and everything. For I'm just getting sick of right now, tell you the truth. I'm not being sent back already. Just because I couldn't give you orange or some flea bag of splayed and lean and all, you know, man. I had everything all there's a few extra channels on the IJ, but we fucked a few extra channels out there, man. In a way it'll fly through all here because you're banging the door out three times a day, you know, and it's you no know, man, it's you're not walking around the one building for the whole day, you know. Man. That's why the days are really long over there. Do we know what they're expecting? They're expecting me to go off the head and start smashing the landing up and all. Like, I know what it's like. But the way I'm going to do it is just keep my head down. Like, they're only waiting, just waiting for me to smash it up so I can put it down here and punish them. You know, man? Fuck it, man. Anyways. Ready? The main prison in Mount Joy is at maximum capacity. When the prison is full to the brim like this, tensions can run high, and even the smallest thing can kick things off. 554 is our capacity at the moment. We're currently at 568 yesterday, and um, I think the current figure at the moment is 564. Yeah. You see that, yeah? 
That's, I'm already here. Uh, no sausage, no meat. I suppose the, the, the fact that we're crowded adds to the tension in the place. Um, and you know what I mean? All those things, have to, all those factors have to be taken into account. You've now filled hungry cunt. Oh, you stop moaning? The difficulty we're compounded with is that because we're in the committed prison for Dublin, we're getting all the protection prisoners, all people looking for protection, all people with issues on the outside and debts owed inside prison. Down in the challenging behaviour unit, a violently disruptive prisoner is being housed in a specially modified cell. A former patient in the Central Mental Hospital, this prisoner has a history of attacking staff and other prisoners using improvised weaponry. The prisoner had ordered pot noodles from the shop. There are no pot noodles in stock, and he just couldn't accept no for an answer. Because of the nature of his mental illness, he has to be handled with care and attention. So we just have to do what we can do with him. Now he will receive his pot noodles tomorrow, but... On the committal's landing, ACO Callagher is hard at work. No, I don't think so. His task today is to try to free up space for a fresh batch of prisoners due in from court. High numbers in the prison are complicating matters. At this moment we're in the middle of trying to assess where we can place prisoners. Uh, some prisoners were placed on transfer list this morning and we're sending four to Wheatfield Prison hopefully this evening. Most of them will comply. There's very few will actually put up a, a serious physical struggle. If that does, it would result in us using control and restraint, which leads to a lot of difficulty then for the staff and for the prisoner because the prisoner could remember me in future years. I wouldn't remember him. And I'm the man that sent him to Wheatfield, so I would be the face he would associate with it. There has been a break glass on one of the wings. A violent assault has occurred in a prison yard. We've just had an incident out in the B exercise yard. We've had a prisoner pretty seriously assaulted. Um, he has some serious head injuries. So at the moment we're organising an escort to get him across the road to the Batter Hospital. It's a fairly severe head injury, so we'll get him pretty quick. No protection up until yesterday. He signed off yesterday, so obviously the issues that were, were there haven't been resolved. Chief Burke is a three bar chief, the most senior uniformed officer in Mount Joy. Three of them out of there. They're coming out yeah. chairs, see, look. Right, okay. One, two, three. That's yeah. it. The man comes and trips him up, right, Paul? Boom. And then these two then go. Oh, only one. Only one, only one. Only one. one, 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 one the others two are minding their own business. So that was pure opportunism. Yeah, what's he after dropping? Your man's after taking a phone. Phone inside. Now, does your man kick something or something on the ground? Yeah, he comes down and does it now. That's me cut itself. That's me cut itself. Okay, they should be easy enough to identify it. Sure, yeah. I'd say it's, it's, it's gang related. Just di different uh, areas of Dublin, where he's from, and the prisoners on the, on the wing that he's on at the moment. We will uh, look into all that there now. Although it, it's pretty severe, pretty severe injury, it's not the worst I've seen. We've seen um, some pretty horrific uh, injuries over the, over the years here. So just a, another one to add to the, the list in, in here in Mount Joy.
the Operational Support Group, known as the OSG, are the security team within the prison service. They deal with the confiscation of all contraband, from drugs to mobile phones to weapons. The assault in Yard has led to the recovery of a handmade weapon, or a shiv. During that attack, uh, this item actually fell from the prisoner's um, person, and he was carrying this weapon. This is like a shiv. It's a piece of metal that he's got, and he's managed to sharpen. And if a prisoner gets a hand on something like that, they don't just see it as a, something to be thrown away. They will immediately use it as a weapon. But uh, yeah, exactly where it came from, I'm not sure, but you find bits and pieces like this around the jail, unfortunately, and the prisoners will use them. Hey, guys. Yeah, I know you box that off me. But I you can have fun trying anyway. Down in the challenging behaviour unit, the violently disruptive prisoner has requested a shower. This means four staff members in riot gear to oversee the operation. This chap has uh, an expertise in making weapons out of everything and he's attacked uh, medical personnel and other prisoners. And he's made threats against every grade of officer in the prison from uh, five eight on the floor right up to the governor. The only reason I don't tonight is because I want to come down and keep an eye on you. I'm sound like that. I'm sound like that. Right, come on, see you in 10 minutes, all right? This gives staff the opportunity to carry out a search of his cell. They need to make sure that he hasn't been picking out any material in the cell to make improvised weapons. When he gets agitated and annoyed with us, he starts kicking. Scuff marks, I mean, that was a brand new door. He was the first fella to use it. You can see over here, he scratched the walls here. Fortunately for us, the metal will actually break away, but not in sufficient quantity for him to make a weapon. A lot of it would be done out of sheer boredom. Mentally, he'd be highly strong. He needs to be stimulated and occupied. It's something that we can't do for him at the moment. How are we fixed, lad? Here we are. All right, bye. He get offered a shower every day. Some days he takes them, some days he doesn't. He gets offered exercise every day. Some days he takes it, some days he doesn't. When he's in here 23 hours a day. We encourage him to take more exercise because 8 by 10 by 13 is in the healthy living space. 48, 72, 96 hours in a row. Go ahead, Rick. Cleaning more. Looks like he was taken out of the fucking radio or something, isn't it? And then we're going to film the fire fire somewhere. That's all, that's probably his area. You know, Phil? I don't think that's where he can be overly worried about anyway. Come on, hurry up with you. Crystal, call him. There are no vacancies left on the Mountjoy campus. The committal's landing is full to the brim. And when inmates only allowed to stay there for 24 hours, Wheatfield Prison has agreed to take four of the Joy's prisoners off their hands. Yeah. Up here first. Three. Among them is James McCardle. Yeah, that's well. Are they up to the war zone, eh? Oh, we yeah. 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 You can't do that. If you're telling us you're not Trevor, you're going to have to act for someone else. Pardon? You're going to want to protect someone else. How are you doing, Mr. Tannen? Well, mate, thanks. That'll be an excellent. I hope we'll all. We feel it's a work training prison, so we encourage all our committals to go there. And if they can live happily out there, well, then we would hopefully not see them back in Mountjoy. Can you even ask for a place? No, I didn't want to go here. Okay. That'll be four vacancies we have, four fresh committals who are coming in from the courts as we speak. So that'll leave us with, we can accommodate five down here at the moment. As well as workshops and courses, the training unit in Mount Joy uses sport to try to rehabilitate prisoners. Ooh, ref, ref. In preparation for a tournament being organised by Bohemians Football Club, the training unit football team has come to Mount Joy West for a warm-up game. 
Very well done, AJ. Pat's games are very, very important. Uh, it's, it's an outlet. It's something to look forward to every week for the lads. Ah, uh, cynical, cynical number 12, cynical. But I lost a couple of players. They were moved out of here for operational reasons. And, you know, they obviously they had to be moved. But it's unfortunate that they happen to be two of our best players. But that's the way it is, because, you know, at the end of the day, we're a prison and we're here to, to keep people here to protect society. I think we should set in stone where we're going with this training new FC. Is it just a reason to get together and have a, a laugh and have a game of football? Or are we here for serious reasons, you know? Are we, are we getting fit and moving away from, you know, the reasons you're here in the first place? Okay, we have a tournament against uh, Bowes, Sandy Hill and Pats. We have to be in that final. We have to win it. All right? Thanks, lads. Thanks. <laughs> For one of Officer Moran's players, things are looking up off the field of play. Connor will soon be starting a college course which will see him leaving the training unit during the day on temporary release. It's a step in the right direction, with only nine months left on his sentence. It's pretty it's pretty I got accepted for a college course out in Finglas and this starts in June. It's just IT and employment skills, just about getting you ready for going back into employment and stuff. I feel good about it, isn't it? But so there's people here that have, that have only started a sentence that would be getting a college course. I've been waiting a long time to get this. I'm in three years, like I only have nine months left. So it's about time I got it. Like The prison gives you a leap card and you, you, you find your own way out to, out to fingers. It's not too hard to find your own way out there. Yeah. I have no problems in telling anybody if they wanted to know that I, if I was in jail or not. I wouldn't have any problem. If they didn't like it, well then that's their own problem. Over to Mountjoy West. Paul's past behaviour is coming back to haunt him. Where would you get it? Hang in now. Best chair. It's the best chair in the prison system, man. He has just found out that he is to be criminally charged over damage he caused to prison property almost a year ago. I mean, you sit back like this. Watch the old heady. Then, 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 then. This is going to get charged for smashing up the cell, man. On the 10th of the 4th, 2015, at Mountjoy Prison, North Circular Road, Dublin 1, did without lawful excuse damage property to it, wash, hand basin and taps, toilet, laminated door view and television and cell. They're saying it's five grand's worth of damage. Everyone else seems to be getting dealt with in the district court. I can get, I can get sent forward to the circuit. I can't believe that. I'm disgusted, with, I'm disgusted with the prison service and I didn't even tell my girlfriend yet. The other day I came in, I was on the phone to her, and I had an argument. I just hung up the phone, came in, grabbed all the pictures off the wall and I was just about to rip them. I said, ah, I can't blow it too much from my back out and told her and uh, she, she says I love you but uh, <clears throat> you're taking drugs, I'm not going to be with you. She keeps saying to me, I just hope you're not stringing me along, Polly. <clears throat> Which is understandable, I'm not stringing her along. With my past record, she has every right to be doubtful of me, to be cautious. And I understand, but she, I never loved anyone in my life. She's the only girl I ever loved, and I bet I'm a loser. If I lose, I'm back to square one, let's say. Mountjoy Prison is a 24-hour facility where most staff members have to work nights once a month. Tonight, Officer Barron is on duty. Go in and check me, prisoners. Every half an hour we do our check. Um, usually there'll be red lights on up until one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, come on. No, boss. They should really have all their stuff before they actually get locked up in the evening. 
We make an exception for tea bags and sugar. But we have to check them before they obviously go into another cell because they like glass and drugs or anything like that. You get it? On your checks, you just check that they're not doing anything that they're not supposed to. Sometimes you'd see them on mobile phones. So you'd report that to the ACO or the LSG. Right, it's coming at 12 o'clock. Start locking up the gate there. Be out in two minutes. The assistant chief officer on duty is ACO Barry. During night shifts, the ACO is in charge of the prison. This is the first patrol now of the night. You have some dark alleys around the back that we have to make sure are secure. Today's before the security nets, you would on occasion find quantities of drugs, mobile phones, or sometimes alcohol, which has been tossed over the wall. Uh, it looks like there's a, a bottle of water after being thrown up. Now that could contain vodka or some other substance but we get the operational support group just to have a check of it in the morning. Since 1850, there have been a number of prisoners who have died within the walls of Mount Joy. Some believe their presence can still be felt. This here is what was known as the separation unit. This is reportedly uh, a very haunted place. This whole building now is shut down and as you can see there is a light on that is the cell where the last prisoner regrettably took his own life before the place was shut down for some reason we just can't seem to knock that light off for the skeptics it's probably an electrical fault uh, or the dubious I leave that one in the air because I certainly wouldn't go in there at night. D3 is showing up. D3 landing. Well, it's the new wing. Ghosts already there. Now to much more serious matters, two prison officers have been injured in an incident which took place in Mount Joy Prison this morning. Thanks for coming on the line, Gabriel. What can you tell us? At approximately 8.30 this morning in an area called the Challenging Behaviour Unit, uh, a prisoner was unlocked by three staff. He attacked uh, the first... It's morning time, and a serious incident has occurred in the Challenging Behaviour Unit. A prisoner on punishment has savagely attacked several members of staff. Type of uh, shiv we believed was two blades involved, uh, so as to do as much harm as possible to our colleagues. Yeah, there's the blade, guys. It's head. Look. Now, in fairness to the staff, they're going to talk him straight away, and he's restrained. You can see the blade still in his hand there. There it is. There. That's the blade. That's in two seconds. I was in the circle area when the call for staff was, was put in. The first thing you could see was two of the injured members uh, coming back up the landing and blood was literally um, pouring from the two of them. There's a strange feeling around the prison after such a serious incident like that. So it's, you know, we have to try and reassure the, the, the staff um, going forward. The injuries the lads sustained, from what I have seen in my period in the job, is uh, very, very, very severe. Like there's a possibility a guy could be maimed for life. I think we've all become accustomed to developing. I think there was a, some guy called a social masks. We'll have a mask for a walk, but inside, you're, you're hurting. There was a, there's a song, you know, the tracks of my tears. I may be smiling, but inside I'm dying. 
brings home to every man and woman who walks here exactly how dangerous an environment we walk in because this incident can potentially happen at any, any one moment in time. So we come to work and we, we are not sure whether we'll be going home at 8 o'clock. You know, that's, that, that's, but that's a given with, this, with, with, with the nature of the job. Governor, Governor, would you like to know, I've been on to the hospital across there. They're waiting on a plastic storage to come down to see him at the moment. Uh, they've confirmed it's a double blade cut and it comes from uh, beneath the hair, underneath the hair, down two inches below his hairline onto his cheek. It's significant what happened today. Just an instant he given out breakfast to the prisoners and it was a premeditated uh, attack. There'll be, you know, criminal charges towards this uh, and we'll ask the Guardi to take it with the utmost seriousness and, and investigate it on that basis. The vicious attack will be the subject of a criminal investigation and the prisoner who carried it out is being brought before an internal disciplinary hearing known as a P-19. Governor, I especially wish to report on the f at approximately 8.20 a.m. I've been offered breakfast to Bovenham prisoner. Suddenly barge past officer It then proceeded to attack the officer's and AC off. A search of the area was done and a weapon was recovered in the shower area. What do you want to say to that? Is that true? Yeah. It is true. They arrested me in the cell with you. And receive lots of privileges for 40 days. Okay? Yeah. That will include phone calls, visits, even recreation, talk shop. Yeah. Understand that? Yeah. Okay, that's the end of this process. This prisoner had had a history of mental health issues. You would wonder, you know, whether they should be in a prison setting or whether they should be in a more uh, secure um, hospital setting. Uh, where they're receiving treatment. But at the moment, I would be looking to have him uh, transferred to another prison uh, because of the, the feelings and the sentiments, you know, around the place. Right. Keeping him here is, is just sending out the wrong message. Right, brothers! Come on. the evening of the attack and an annual deceased members mass is giving prison staff a moment to reflect on the severity of what occurred today. Over the years this sort of attack it was usually prisoner on prisoner and it's bad enough to see those but when you see it happening to one of your own colleagues we're, we're just a little bit concerned at the moment. We've never really had major incidents like this before. Yes, there have been a, a few over the years, but we're just hoping now that it's not uh, something that's beginning to, to creep into the service. I'm on the job now about seven months, and this is the most serious. You know, two staff members were very seriously injured. It could have been far worse, so. You realise the dangers that the job of a prison officer is at times, you know, and it brings it home to, to roost a bit. Next, on the joy. 200% today, 200%, we screen for phones, drugs. We do catch them a lot of the time. Staff and prisoners wrestle with the continuing problem of drugs in the prison. As the lengths inmates will go to to breach the system are exposed. <laughs> 